Um, so you're very welcome. I hope you're all feeling good and ready for a half a flow this evening. Um, prop wise, a couple of blocks or something along those lines just to find a little bit of extension in your arms and perhaps a folded blanket or um, a very small pillow um, for behind the backs of your legs and for sitting on if you want later on. Um, we're doing a general practice this evening, I thought it would be a nice uh, way just to really reopen the body again and go on a journey, an exploration through the body and just paying attention to sensation as it arises and noticing any pockets of tightness uh, in the body where we need a little bit more attention. And towards the end of the practice, the pace will pick up a little bit. It should get quite warm. Um, and I thought what we could do is really uh, workshop a little bit of um, up dog, okay? Uh, absolutely not, not mandatory for any of you who prefer just to keep your vinyasas low key, absolutely fine. Uh, I'll bring you through modifications for that. So we are going to start off um, in child's pose, in balasana pose. So coming onto your knees, taking any padding that you might need underneath your knees or even behind the knees. And know that if you are um, padding up behind the knees particularly, your upper body, your head, may need to come up a little bit higher. And so have a block under your eyebrow centre there. Um, so that, uh, so that you, you can support yourself when you're in your fo forward fold. So I'm going to take my knees nice and wide press my toenails in towards the floor and just walk my hands out in front of me there. And I'll just demonstrate if, if you've got something behind the backs of the knees which can feel really nice in your body, particularly if your knees don't like too much compression. You can just take a block there under your eyebrow centre, place the eyebrow centre onto the block and relax down. So your heels are working toward each other, your knees are as wide as you can Bring them, and your hands are active. Press your fingertips into the floor, lift up into the armpits, and gather those shoulder blades onto the back there. Feel a tone in the belly. Feel the sides of the body elongate, and just work your sit bones down towards your heels. Good, nice and active, as if you're clawing the ground. And come into your breath. And I know it's a little bit tricky to come into your breath when you're in a forward fold. So if you can try and bring awareness to your breath in your back body and feel the, the back ribs on your body lifting and expanding on the in-breath. And then exhale and feel them corseting in around you, hugging in around your body. Create that constriction in the back of your throat as you work with ujjayi breath. And see if you can lengthen that breath. And at the same time, keeping a gentle quality to it, but gentle but firm. And see if you can perhaps fill up a little bit more as you inhale nice and slow and then hold at the top of the breath just for a moment. And then exhaling, corseting in around your middle. Good, nice and slow. And then holding at the bottom of the breath for another count, just one count. And beginning the cycle once more. Just let your bones become heavier and heavier. Let your skin fall like a blanket over your body. Let gravity do its work on the front body. Soften the skin around the eyes and the jaw. I hope you can hear me when I'm down here. <laughs> Good. And just notice if there's anything in particular in your body or mind that's talking to you right now. Just noticing whatever it is 
and then popping up to the side um, just honoring whatever it is that maybe you know needs a little bit of attention and offering your practice up for whatever that is so that you have whatever you need to sustain and strengthen you and heal you. Let's take three more like this. And then exhale fully. You can put the block over to the side if you're using one and just walk your hands over to the right side of the mat, keeping them a little bit narrower than shoulder distance apart, getting a nice stretch down the left side of the body. Keep working that left sit bone down towards the left heel. And then we'll just take a little thread through. So take the left hand underneath the right armpit, turn the palm of the left hand up, and then take the left side of the face down onto the floor. Use a block or folded blanket there if you need. So now you're twisting. Mm -hmm. Good. And just see if you can feed that left arm underneath the right a little bit more. Shift your torso over towards the right if you can. And then push into the heel of the right hand and bring the weight back. So you feel that stretch in the back, upper left. One more here. Exhale it out. Inhale, unthread. And then just walk your hands over to the left side. Take the hands shoulder distance apart again. Stretch out the right side of the body this time. Staying with the ujjayi breath as you work through. One more here. Exhale, anchoring down into the right sit bone. Good, then thread that right arm underneath the left armpit. Turning the palm of the right hand to face up. Spin the chest up towards the left. Maybe walk the torso over a little closer to the left side. A little bit or a lot. I know it's early in the practice, so be gentle. Looking out on the left armpit. And then push the left heel into the hand. Left heel of the left hand into the ground. Bring the weight back. Okay, take two more here. One more. Exhale, just gently unthread yourself. And then I'd like you to come and lie on your belly, please, supporting yourself up on your elbows in Sphinx Pose. Just taking your forearms shoulder distance apart. Press the palms of the hands down. So your elbows are beneath your shoulders and your toenails are pressing into the floor with your big toes just a few inches apart. Okay? And then move the tailbone down towards the heel so your navel lifts away from the floor. Keep that engagement and lift the chest forward of the shoulders, gathering the shoulder blades onto the back. Good. Press into those toenails once more. Find that gorgeous lengthening. Bring your upper arm bones back. Sides of the neck back. Find your breath. Then keeping that, just turn to look over the right shoulder. Keeping the chest facing forward. Slowly turning to look over the left shoulder. Inhaling, 
coming to look forward again. Then take your arms out at diagonals, press the heels of the hand into the ground and lift up into seal pose. Strongly pressing into those big toes. If this does not feel good in your body, the option is lift the belly away from the floor even more and see if you can puff out into the kidney region at the back. Otherwise, if it's still uncomfortable there, come back, back down into your sphinx pose. Dropping the elbows gently to the floor. Lift the heart. So taking those hands and spreading the fingers out. Gorgeous, heart opening moves to wake up the body. Bring the energy up a little bit. And then exhale, just gently coming down. Walk your hands back underneath you and press up onto your knees. So here we're coming into broken toe pose. Just have your blanket handy. And you're just gonna roll the toes underneath you and sit up on your heels. So if this is too much pressure, the, the trick is to lean forward and you can also use blocks. Okay, if the floor is a bit far away, you can use blocks to take some of the pressure off there. Otherwise, sitting back towards the heels and enjoy that opening, enjoy, it's probably quite a strong word. <laughs> Opening the soles of the feet. How does that feel? <laughs> oh yeah. So you can tap with the weight that you're putting into those, those feet. Come back to the Ujjayi breath. Let's take three more here, please. And the last one. Exhale and release. Now, I'm just going to turn to the front. You stay where you are, coming into Thunderbolt pose. And for this one, we're just going to sit on our heels. So we're on our knees, sitting on our heels. And I thought maybe a little bit of calf work. So I've got my blanket here and I'm going to fold it or uh, roll it into a very, very small, tight roll. And I'm going to bring that and sit on top of it, okay? And I'm going to put it into the broadest area of my calves, okay? So I'm bringing it behind me, lifting up, and then setting it across the broadest area of my calves and then sitting back down onto it. And then hopefully if it's, if it's hard enough work, you can feel, you can get some sensation there into the trigger points in your calves. And if you're not getting any sensation, perhaps move it down a fraction. And you can just feel it, that gentle pressure is really doing the calves good, just helping release any tightness in there. Okay, good. And then I'd like you just to take a few rounds of full yogic breath. So when you're ready, just pressing your palms down on your lap, nice and gently. As you inhale, feel the belly expand. Good. Feel the sides of the body expand. Then open it up around the barrel of your chest. Fill up. And then keep the shoulders down. But can you see if you can take a little bit of extra air, just lifting all the way up into the capitals. That's it. Good. Hold. And then... At your leisure, slow, long exhale, emptying upper chest around the very center of your torso, and then gently feeling the belly pulling in towards the spine. Good. And again, as slow as you like, inhaling, allowing the back belly to expand. The ribs opening up away from each other. Feel that opening and spaciousness in the back of the body too. And then lifting up, big extra breath into the clavicles, lifting up the chest and hold and hold. And then exhaling slowly. Good. And then from here, if you'd like to move 
that blanket down a fraction more and come and sit down on it. Perhaps you want a tighter, a slightly bigger roll as you come into that narrower point of the, um, the calves. You can sit back down on it. And then from here we're just going to work into the traps. So just take your clasp of opposite elbows there, relaxing the arms down, keeping them just relaxed, sitting on your body there. And you're going to keep facing forward and start to rock side to side. So keep your torso and your head facing forward and you're just slowly moving from side to side, not necessarily with the breath. And you can actually feel that beginning to loosen and release tensions. Okay, just let the skin on your face soften. Notice any tension around the jaw and eyes and let that go. And then just bring those forearms up to shoulder height. Same thing, keep facing forward. Oh yes, good. And then bring them up and overhead. And if, the, if you can't reach your elbows, that's fine. Do whatever it takes, just bringing the arms perhaps overhead like so. Okay, whatever works. But keep facing forward so that you can feel it releasing down into the lower mid-back. That's it. Nice and easy. I love this. <laughs> okay, and then just gently bringing it back down again. Okay. So from here, feel free to move your rolled blanket down on the fraction. And then what you can do is take equal arms. So let's bring the right arm underneath the left, wrap them around each other. Okay, keeping the wrap, lift the elbows, it doesn't matter how wrapped you get. Okay, lift the elbows up to shoulder height and drop the arm bones down. Okay, your gaze is down into the middle distance or into the creases of the elbows. Mm. That feels really good after a long day at the desk or driving. Okay, then exhale, release that. We're gonna get moving. Let's crisscross the other way. Okay, wrap the arms around. Don't worry if they're not the same on either side. That's all right. Lift the elbows, drop the arm bones. Drop the gaze, soft gaze. Mm. Just take three more rounds of breath here, please. And then exhale it out and release. Let's give those shoulders a little roll. Okay, last one, if you've got any calves left, <laughs> you can move that blanket down and just sit on it or just pop it over to this side. Just take the hands, clasp them behind your back, lift the chest. Lift those clasped hands up off your back. That's it. Soft elbows. Sides of the neck back. Good. Just opening into the pecs. Mm. And then release. <laughs> Take those clasp hands out in front of you. Round the back this time. So just suck the belly in towards, towards the spine. Dropping the gaze down towards the belly. And then lastly, lifting the hands up. Pressing out through the knuckles of the hands and the fingers. Good, lifting up and then exhaling and releasing. And lastly, just taking the hands back behind you again with the other index finger on top. Same thing, lifting up. Sides of the neck back. Okay, and out front, round the back. Doesn't that feel better already? I think we're ready for Shavasana. <laughs> Would be so lucky. <laughs> Those hands up. Turn the palms of the hands and press out to the knuckles of the fingers. See if you can bring those arms back a little bit more. Whatever works in your body. Whatever feels really good. And then exhaling, release. 
Okay, good. Let's come on to all fours. Take your hands shoulder distance apart. Take your knees hip distance apart and the knees are beneath the hips. Working through a few rounds of cat-cow just to get a little bit deeper into the spine of the chest. Gather the shoulder blades back, drop the navel and lift your sit bones. Okay, good. That feels so nice. Exhaling, rounding the back. Pull the navel in. Drop the gaze, push the floor away, even more, push, 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 and then inhale, come back to your cat, and exhale, to dog or cow, to dog, oh, we're not quite there yet, inhale and lift, exhale and round, inhale and lift, exhale and round, two more rounds,
round it in, inhale to extend, bring it in, flex the toes of the left foot, find that engagement, pull the navel in, use your core strength, good, keep going, take two more of these guys, and the last one, hold, sweep the left hand down to the left foot, you've got your kickstand, press the left foot into the hand, Start to lift your chest, sides of the neck back. Good, lifting, pressing, soles of the left feet, pushing away, that's it. Pushing the foot into the hand. One more breath in here. And then exhale, look down at the floor, release the foot, come onto all fours, knees wide, sit back on your heels, big exhale, well done. Take another two breaths here please, exhale, and again, inhale, and exhale, okay, inhale, all fours, alright, now just take your knees slightly behind your hips, about two to three inches. Hands are shoulder distance apart. Press down into the floor. Roll the toes under. Inhale. Exhale. Push into the hands. Lift the knees up off the floor. Walk the feet to inner hip distance apart. Okay, good. And knees can be nice and soft. And you can walk it out. Nice, soft, downward facing dog. And then just walking slowly as if you're moving through very deep mud and it's very slow going and then each time you take a little step you swivel the hips over to the opposite side so you get that gorgeous stretch down the opposite side of the body and again stepping twisting the hips to the other side stretching into the lateral body and then moving through Good, stepping and twisting, stepping and twisting. Relax the head and neck. Don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> okay, good. Last two. I know you can feel the heat building. It's all good, coming back down, we're facing. Okay, so from here, let's work our way into plank. Inhale, and you can start to ripple through the torso, shifting the, the chest forward, bringing the gaze forward into the middle distance and lift the chest. Okay, and then bring it back on your exhale. If you can imagine you're a marionette and somebody's got a string attached to your navel, and they're pulling at the navel to lift you up, 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 as you move back into downward facing dog. And then again, that tugging at the navel as you lift up, rippling through the torso, bringing the chest and moving it forward, looking forward into plank, and then moving back again. Feel free to drop to your knees anytime you need a breather. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward facing. Okay, inhale, come forward, last one. Come forward into plank, good. And then just drop your knees to the floor, okay? And just see that your knees are, again, still an inch or two or three inches, up to three inches behind your um, hips. Okay, so that you can come down and practice chaturanga, all right? So for chaturanga, I only want you to come down halfway. You're gonna bend your elbows and keep them closely in by your sides and keep the heart lifting forward. So coming down only halfway, okay, or to a point where that's comfortable enough for you today, okay? So lifting the heart and just bending forward, keeping the elbows in by the sides, keep the neck nice and long, and then inhale and coming back up. Okay, let's try that again. Exhale, coming about halfway, inhale and back up. Exhale back halfway, inhale and up again, 
and one more of those, exhaling, and then inhale, okay. So good stuff, let's just take a, a little rest, a rest. <laughs> give your arms a shake, and from here we're going to move into up dog, okay. So we're going to take it nice and slow, and you're going to have the option of having the knees on the floor, or taking the knees off the floor. So coming back into that position again, knees behind the hips, inhale, exhale, just let the chest come down halfway, okay, and then you're going to lift, the keep lifting the chest, and the, you see the toes are rolled under, you're going to shift forward, yeah, press the toenails into the floor, lift the heart, okay, and then your thighs are on the floor here, your knees are on the floor, option is press into your toenails and lift the thighs, lift the knees, okay, and then bring it back, knees to the floor. All right, let's try that again. Inhale, lift the chest forward, sinking the hips, okay, lifting the heart, then press into the toenails, lift the knees, lift the thighs. Drop the knees, shift the hips back, okay, one more time. Inhale, shift your weight forward, drop the hips, press into the toenails, lift the knees, lift the thighs. Heart lifts. Feel the arm bones moving back. Okay, so let's see if you can get it into downward facing dog from here. Options, drop the knees and make your way into dog, or roll the toes under, lift the hips back. Downward facing. How did that go? Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, let's just uh, drop to the hips for a sec, or drop to the knees for a sec. And we're back. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Roll the toes under, lift the knees off the floor. Inhale, shift your forward into plank. Option is to drop the knees. Exhale, bring it down halfway. Bring it forward as you flip over the toes, one at a time or both together. Lift the heart. Exhale, roll the toes back or flip them over one at a time. Downward facing dog or bring it through all fours. So there's so many modifications. All good, shifting the weight forward. I'll do, do the knees to the floor, drop my hips to the floor, press the toenails into the floor, lift the heart. And then exhale, knees to the floor, toes under, shift back, downward facing. All right, so choose one that works for you. Okay, and we'll practice that tonight. Bring the weight back, downward facing dog. Okay, now from here, bend the knees, look forward at the hands, and you're just going to walk your hands forward into Uttanasana, full forward fold, and just fold it in here with soft knees, keeping your feet a little bit closer together than in inner hip distance. Drop the top of the head down. Okay, so if you're wobbly here in forward fold, with your knees soft, you can pop a block in between your thighs and squeeze that block. That's going to give you a lot more stability and bring the weight back into the heels a little bit more. Okay, so you just don't have that feeling like you're going to go into a forward tumble. Otherwise, you can just take your hands, clasp your fingers together behind you and lift those clasped hands up off the back. Squeeze the block. If you have one, drop the top of the head down towards the floor. Good. Press into the toes, press into the outer edge of the feet, press into the heels, press into the inner margins of the feet. Good, squeeze the block, thighs moving back. Good. One more breath here. Exhale it out, release those hands to your hips. Keep the elbows back, bent, and lift them high. Rise up, lift the heart. Come up to stand and exhale, release that block if you have one. And come up to stand, well done. Whoo, we made it. <laughs> okay, so now you're here. Take your feet, again, inner hip distance apart. Because it's not very natural to have your feet together, it's actually not that stable. I mean, when do you, if you're trying to get your balance, when do you ever have your feet right together? Okay, so whatever feels good, about any hip distance is pretty ideal. 
And then strong legs. Root down into the earth just as you did a moment ago. Draw up into those thighs. Hug the muscles into the bones. Press the tailbone down and lift the belly. Lift the heart too as you lengthen into the sides of the body. Then lift the arms up and overhead. Take the hands and clasp them, turning the palms of the hands up and reach out towards the right, pressing down into the left heel. Inhale, right up. Exhale over to the left. Press down into that right heel, spin the chest up. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale and release. Let's come up to the top of the mats and work through some vinyasas. Moving through um, whatever uh, vinyasa worked for you. And if you don't want to do up dog anymore, <laughs> Just feel free to go into Cobra, okay? So from here, in hip distance apart, inhale and lift those arms up. As you exhale, can you fold forward, Uttanasana, soft knees, drop the top of the head down. Inhale, half lift. And then exhale, step your right foot back and your right knee to the floor, sink the hips, lift the heart, try to lengthen that spine. Good. Coming onto the fingertips, and if you do need the blocks, go ahead and use them. Just feel that gorgeous opening there in the front of the right thigh as you press the tailbone down towards the floor. See that your front left knee doesn't become beyond the left toes. If it has, simply walk your front foot out a little bit more. Okay. And then from here, just take your hands onto the floor, roll the toes, the back foot under. We're going to work through a vinyasa. Step it back, lift it into plank, and take a nice big inhale. As you exhale, either drop the knees to the floor and then come down halfway. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Arm bones back. Exhale, toes under one at a time or together, pressing it back, downward facing. Well done. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Let's take an inhale and lift the right leg, inhale. Exhale, bend the knee to the nose, let it light on that back foot and step her forward, bring the back knee to the floor, sink the hips, low lunge, nice long spine. Your gaze is into the middle distance. Press the toenails of the back foot into the floor. Mm. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Roll the toes with the back foot under. And then step that back foot forward. Fold inwards. Uttanasana. Oh yeah. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, arm fold. Soft knees. Inhale, root down into those strong feet and rise up. Hands together above your head. Exhale into your heart and release. Straight into the next one. Building onto that inhale, bring it up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale and fold. Take the left foot back and then bring the back knee to the floor. Then straight away, take the second arm, the right arm, into the inside of the right foot, heading towards lizard. So just taking the hips down, hands to the blocks if you need. Let the hips sink down to get deeper into the hips here. Lift the heart and drop the tailbone. Two more. One more. And then exhale, you're going to shift those hips back. We're going to take Ardha Hanumanasana, runner's lunge, toe heel, the right foot into the midline again, and then shift the hips back. Bring the outer right hip back, outer left hip forward. Blocks are welcome here into the hands. You're walking your hands back in line, roughly with the upper shin or knee, and fold forwards. Chest moves towards the right shin. Put, pull your toes of your right foot back. That will increase that feeling of sensation in the back of the right leg. So temper that to whatever you need. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. 
just shifting the weight forward here. You're coming into a low lunge with one hand on either side of the front foot. Drop the tailbone, lift the heart, and then roll the toes of the back foot under, and you're gonna make your way through vinyasa, take it into a plank. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra is always optional. And then move it on back to downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, exhale. Now, inhale your left leg up. Exhale, step it through to meet your hands. And bring your back uh, knee to the, to the floor. Okay, bring your two hands onto the inside of the front foot, sink the hips. Inhale, exhale, inhale. You can come down to your elbows if you're feeling flexible this evening and just walk that left foot out to the out towards the outer rail of the mat a little bit more. Inhale, exhale, inhale. And then exhale to shift those hips back, coming into Ardha Hanumanasana. Lift the toes of the left foot off the floor. You can just walk that left foot in toward the midline a little bit more. And then fold it forward, tempering it to whatever you need. Once you get into the shape, can you draw your outer left hip back? Good. Fold. Keep softness into that left knee too. Don't just sink into the joints there. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and then exhale. Let's bring it forward into a, a low lunge here. Roll the toes of the back foot under and just step it forward into Uttanasana, soft knees folded in. Inhale, half lift, exhale and fold. Inhale, root down and rise to start. Exhaling, bring it in to the heart. Okay, let's add on a bit more. Take an inhale and rise up. Exhale and fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale and fold. Step the right foot back into a low lunge. Okay, good. We're going to skip out the, um, the deeper lizard for the, the next round. Okay, and then shift the weight back into Ardha Hanumanasana. Half runner's lunge. Good. Shifting that outer left hip back, outer right hip forward. Inhale, bring her back into the low lunge again just for a moment as you roll the toes of the back foot under and lift the back knee up off the floor. Now, press back the front heel into the ground. Good. And then keep drawing the outer right hip forward. Nice, strongly engaged legs. Hug the muscles into the bones. Drawing right up into the center of the pelvis, keep it strong and lift the hands up towards the sky. High lunge. Keep those strong, strong legs. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Hands onto your hips, spin the back heel to the floor and spin towards your right. Turning your toes out, heels in, just a little bit. And we're taking Skandhasana, we're going to bring our weight over to the right high, towards the back of your mat. Lift the heart as you fold forward. And now we're getting into the adductors, into the insides of the legs. Lift the heart. Inhale, bring it up through centre, exhale over to the left. Inhale, bring it up to centre, over to the right. Good. Then spin to look towards the back of the mat. You're just taking one hand on either side of the front foot as you make your way into a vinyasa, take it into plank. Lift the heart. Exhale, take chaturanga of your choice. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing. One, two, and last breath here. And exhale it out. Okay, so this time it's right leg inhale to lift. Exhale, step it through. Bring the back knee to the floor, low lunge. Sink the hips. Good, inhale. 
Nice long spine, lift the heart, drop the tailbone. Inhale, exhale, let's bring it back, Ardha Hanumanasana. So we're really giving the legs a nice workout. Just walk your hands back and fold forward. Take that outer right hip back once more. Inhale, exhale, inhale. And then exhale, bring it forward again. Roll the toes of the back foot under. Find those strong legs, lift up through the back inner seam of the thigh and rise up. Keep that engagement and lift the arms high. Good. Tailbone moves down. Use your belly stroke, you've got it. Find that mid-back area and breathe in there, expanding into the back of the body. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the hips, spin the back, heel down, turn toes out, heels in. Skandhasana to the left, to the right, lift the chest as you come into the fold, to the right, turn to look over the left foot, good, this time you're stepping it forward, Uttanasana, fold in, take a half lift, inhale, exhale and fold, inhale, root down and rise, all the way, let's go straight into the second side, exhale to fold, you can feel that heat building. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold again. Take the left foot. Bring it into a low lunge and sink the hips. Really opening up the hips and the legs. So good. Okay, inhale again. And then exhale, shift it back. Runner, runner's lunge. Runner's lunge. <laughs> fold forward. Bring that outer right hip back. Good. Good, find softness in the knee there, particularly if you're tighter in the back of the leg. Inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale. Bring it forward into that low lunge. Roll the toes of the back foot under. Rise up, crescent lunge. Strongly engage those legs. Lift up through that back thigh. Take the arms up. If you're very wobbly, make sure your legs are super strong or take your hands onto your hips. Inhale, tailbone down, pull the navel in. Inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale. Exhale, hands to the hips, spin the back heel to the floor, stand up and up, fold forward. Nice strong legs. You're bending your knee over your, your ankle, it's going slightly beyond there. Over to the second side. Back to the back of the mat again, good. Take it into a vinyasa. As you spin forward, take the left foot back to join the right. Find your plank. You can either drop the knees here and take her through your vinyasa. You can even take cobra, look, there's cobra. And then exhale, downward facing. Okay, good, take another two breaths here, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale. Okay, this time inhale, lift your left leg. Exhale, step it through to meet your hands. Bring it into a low lunge. Sink the hips. Ooh, okay, good. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, let's shift it back. Runner's lunge, fold forward. Add your left hip back. Should feel it, be feeling a little bit more open, hopefully. <laughs> okay, we'll just work with what body is providing us this evening. Inhale. Exhale, bring it forward into your low lunge. Roll the toes of the back feet under and lift up towards crescent. Find those strong legs. Drive down into that left heel. Take the outer right hip forward, the outer left hip back again. Find that scissoring in the hips that will keep that engagement, giving you that uplift. So take an inhale here and engage. Exhale and shine out. And again, inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. And then exhale, hands onto the hips. Spin the back heel to the floor. Skandasana over to the right. Over to the left. Over to the right. Good. Take the hands to the floor. Spin it over to the top of your mat. I bet you're glad to see it. Two feet into inner hip distance apart and fold. Soft knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, root down. Rise up to stand. 
Exhale, bring it into the heart. And release. Good. I hope you're feeling okay. <laughs> That's the end of the fast stuff. So I'm going to invite you to take a couple of blocks and have them to hand for the next bit. Um, so you're going to take a big step out with the right foot, taking your feet wide apart. So if you raise your arms, you'll see your ankles are roughly beneath your uh, wrists, okay? And parallel your feet. Soft knees, okay? And then just, you can pop your blocks there. That's if you need them. You may not need them. Hands to your hips. Lift the chest. Find the strength in your legs. You know how to do it now. From the earth, draw right up. Hug the muscles right up into the bones. Feel that engagement rising all the way up, right into the center of the pelvis there. And move the tailbone down. So now you're finding this mid-core strength. Good. Lengthen into the sides of the body. Keep that length as you fold. Fold halfway, then drop your hands to the floor or to the blocks. Prasarita Padatanasana. Soft knees, remember, be gentle. Drop the top of the head down towards the floor. Now, option is to walk the hands or blocks back. Good. <clears throat> Just enough till you get sensation in the backs of the legs. Some people find it a little bit more uh, easily than others. So be patient and just find a spot that you can really work with. Inhale, exhale and fold her in. Okay. That is the legs done. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna take uh, our hands over towards, towards the right. You can use your blocks, you can move over there. Walk them over towards the right foot, stretch it out. Feel that stretch down the left side of the body. And then inhale, walk your hands through center over to the left side. So you're taking your hands a little less than shoulder distance apart, shall we say. Use the blocks if your legs feel like they need a little bit of assistance. Okay. Whew. Now, walking your hands back in a little bit, you're going to turn towards the front of your mat again. So spinning the toes of your front foot over to the front of the mat. And we're going to work our way just into a folded pigeon here. So just bending that front leg. Right, so press the toenails of the left foot into the floor. The front uh, left knee is behind the heel of the left hand, the left foot is behind the heel of the right hand. And you can pop a block behind the bent leg. Okay, so if you have to have a block underneath the leg there, you may want to block under your head at the front. Okay, optional. Now, when you get into your full division, press the toenails of the front foot into the floor. Make sure the back leg has to splayed out to the side and bring yourself down to the fold. Good. So just getting into the piriformis and the glute need. Just finding Ujjayi breath once more. So for anyone who has any knee issues, this is a good point to you know, give you an alternative for this particular pose. Um, you can take thread the needle on your back, so you simply come onto your back, knees bent, cross the left ankle over the right uh, knee, and then lift the right foot off the floor and just take a grip around the back of the right thigh. Alright, that may be more comfortable for you. And if you have a wall handy, pop your right foot up against the wall. Because we're really just trying to cool the energy of our practice now. 
and really come back into ourselves. So we've got quite a, an introspective forward fold in the folded pigeon. So if you are taking it on your back, go ahead and find the most chilled out version of that for you. And switch it up, take it to the second side. So the best option really is to work your way through downward facing dog, taking your hands underneath your shoulders, roll the toes with the back foot under and press up. And then take the right knee behind the heel of the right foot, right uh, foot behind the heel of the left, and toe heel your left uh, foot behind you, making sure the leg doesn't splay out. Pop yourself underneath that bent leg if you need it. And then fold. Okay. Taking uh, care just to push the right heel away from you there. So obviously, if you're in thread the needle, just cross your right ankle above your left knee. Switching sides. Okay, let's just take it out of here and come onto your backs, please. Nice and easy. Take in whatever you need for a brief shavasana, and if you want to stay in a longer shavasana, go ahead and use whatever props you favor most. Okay, but before we do that, let's just take a simple twist of the spine by hugging the knees in towards the chest. And then let the two knees drop over to the right, just taking your arms over your head or into a goalpost position, encouraging the left shoulder blade down onto the floor, and maybe turning to look over towards the left. Inhaling, knees up to center, and exhaling over towards the left, turn your gaze towards the right this time. Exhale. Let's inhale, bring those knees up to center. Find your way into the most comfortable shavasana, take it a nice wide pose, your legs nice and wide apart and your arms splayed out. Breath in and on your exhale just release the body down, let the mu muscles relax and soften and the bones be heavy and just let that skin sag, drape above onto your body like a blanket once more. Releasing that practice with a nice natural rhythm of breath. And just melt into the floor, take rest. Okay, so for those of you who would like to stay a little bit longer, 
go ahead and do that. Uh, by all means, take the rest, most important pose of your practice. Um, or if you'd like to come up now, just bend those knees, roll over to your side and bring yourself up to a seat. And just quietly, calmly taking the hands together at the heart space, bowing the head in there. Mm. Big breath in. And then release that beautiful practice with a nice slow breath out. Just allow yourself to be present with your body for a few moments. And I'll say to you, Namaste. And we'll see you next time, yogis. <laughs>